Hey, Steve Mignogna here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardson Auto Wrecking in Bernardson, Massachusetts with a 1981 Toyota Celica Supra. Now the Supra, of course, was uh, Toyota's effort to take on the Datsun Z car, 240Z, 260Z, 280Z of the 70s and early 80s. And in fact, these first generations were produced between 1978 and 1981. And what makes the Toyota Celica Supra different from a Toyota Celica is the extra five inches added right here in the firewall forward area. We see that on the inner structure, the frame rails, and basically from the firewall back, the body shell is very similar to a standard Toyota Celica, which would have a four cylinder engine. Now that's the whole thing. Why add five inches? Well, right up here would have been Toyota's inline six cylinder engine specific to the Supra only to give the Supra some super performance to take on the six cylinder Datsun Z car. So again, it's an interesting thing in the world of automotive engineering. When the engine bay is too small to accommodate a six popper, you make it longer. And so the frame rails and inner fenders on the Supra are very specific. Again, longer up here by five inches to accept the four cylinder or six cylinder engine. Now this one here is an 81, it would have had fuel injection. And here are some of the remains of that. Here is the uh, mass airflow sensor, a little computer made by Nippon Denzo, right there, the air box here with the filter inside still, there it is. And this would have fed that inline six to give this more power than a regular Toyota Supra. Now, Supras and Celicas both had front disc brakes, although the Supra had special wheels, these aluminum wheels here, which are 14 inches. And this one here is the rear factory water farmer tractor ballast option right there. But again, these wheels are 14 inches and they're cast aluminum, which in 1979, 80, 81 were pretty exotic stuff. Again, four lugs like the regular Toyota Celica. But again, this is a 14 inch aluminum wheel, which in 1981, when this car was new, was a pretty exotic thing. The standard Celica had a stamped steel wheel. Again, the front disc brakes on Supra a little bit bigger than a standard Celica and we see them right there. But again, four lugs still at this point in time. Now again, the Supra was strictly a hatchback, no four doors, no wagons, no convertibles, although some convertible conversions were made, uh, but they weren't Toyota authorized. Uh, let's look inside here, and these were loaded, either an automatic or a four-speed or five-speed manual transmission. Uh, no four speeds, again, five speed. But this one here is the optional full boat stereo system. We can see the equalizer with all those gauges, a little of the switch no the knobs, the dip switches, and basically the ability to custom tailor the sound. Probably eight speakers in this car, I would guess. And uh, this still has the 80 mile an hour speedometer. Again, there was no going over 85 in uh, any new cars due to federal mandates because we all had to drive 55, unless you were Sammy Hagar. Now here's the beauty of the Supra. The first generation Supra was a pretty, pretty popular car. And here is Auto Guide 1981 right here. And this shows prices on all the new cars, including Supra. And we can see back here, Toyota Celica. We can see that the Celica is lumped in with the Supra because they are cousins. But on the right hand side, we can see four cylinder models will be rated 25 miles per gallon in city driving for 81. The Supra earns 22, again, thanks to its six cylinder engine, which had 134 cubic inches, or 144, excuse me, 2.4 liters. But we see here the comparisons of everything, the specifications between the Celica and the Supra, everything's the same, everything except for the wheelbase. We can see that the uh, Supra has 103.5 inches. The others are in at 98.4 inches, but everything else, the length, the width, everything's basically identical to the uh, the two vehicles. So interesting to see that, you know, Toyota simply added five inches to make room for that big six and voila, the Supra was born. Now that's the first generation Supra. The second generation Supra was so popular that MPC made a model kit of it. And here's one right here. This is actually from 1982 when this was a new deal. Of course, uh, midway through 81, the second gen Supra arrived on the scene and this can be built stock or custom. Now I started this model, this very model, back in 1986 when I was a, a senior in college, I was at the University of Stirling in Scotland and I started to build it stock. However, I put Porsche 956 drivetrain under this with a Dana 60, you gotta have that. But these are Porsche engine parts here. There's the flat six out of the 956 Le Mans race car. So I love the style of the second gen Supra, but I wanted to have more power. So I put a Supra motor. I haven't finished this one, maybe someday I will. I remember one of the problems was I started to paint it. We can see right here, 
that's the original. I put body kit on it and stuff, but something went wrong. We can see clearly that I got a mad and uh, didn't finish it. Someday, maybe I will. But getting back to the differences between the first and second generation Supras, this is Motor Trend, February 82. We know the drill. Canceled? What do you mean we're canceled? But inside this, we have a nice review of how Supra grew up. And here it is right here, Supra versus Supra. It says here, the Celica Supra has changed overnight from a vaguely defined personal luxury car to a Razor Edge GT that's within a few horsepower of being a supercar. It was a rare, it was rare to see such a dramatic change from one model to its successor. So indeed, the Supra became quite an exotic vehicle. We see here at the back, it went from having a beam axle to independent suspension, extra beefy trailer arms, and all these things that made the second generation Supra a much more exotic vehicle. In fact, almost everything about them was improved. And we see on the left, there's the 81, which is what we're dealing with right here in front of us. And uh, we can see that it had a 2,895 pound curb weight, cost 12,578 bucks, did zero to 60 in 10.24 seconds. Meanwhile, the regenerated car with the independent rear suspension uh, was 15,648, so like three grand more, weighed 2,910 pounds, a little bit more, but would go zero to 60 in 8.4 seconds. In other words, two seconds quicker, which is like 20 car lengths if it's a quarter mile, 10th is a full car length. So anyway, the new Supra Reborn kind of evolved and replaced the first gen, but these are still very special cars and collectors these days are paying good money. So it's kind of a shock to see this one here in the junkyard. Uh, this again, we have featured this car before, maybe a year ago. Uh, between then and now, a viewer saw the video grab the engine and transmission. And so that's why we're paying this a second visit. But now we can actually open the tailgate. Now, one thing about the Super, because it's based on the Celica, it's a very functional car, it has a hatchback, which was a big deal in late 70s, early 80s. So let's open it and see what we find inside. Okay, here's the, the security panel, this thing right here, which was there to kind of keep prying eyes and fingers from getting in the back of the Supra. But underneath it, we see here, uh, okay, some little visors, I guess for backseat passengers to keep the sun off your back. You can put these in and these would help to protect the back of your neck from getting cooked. Uh, the load floor here, nicely carpeted with these little load strips right here, color coded. The chrome uh, Mylar applique, well, okay, it's a Japanese car. I mean, any car back then would have had this stuff here, but it does kind of turn to crap. But under the back of this thing, what do we have? Interesting to see a wood. Huh. factory wood inside here, sort of a plywood type effect. <laughs> Is it going to be Jimmy Hoffa? Oh, there we go. Okay, got the original spare tire. Steel, go figure. Okay, a, a run flat spare right there. Here's the top of the gas tank right here. And this would allow access to the electric fuel pump, which is inside. And this wire right here feeds electricity to the pump inside. That's why modern EFI cars, when you turn the key here, a little pump comes on. So again, the inside of the Supra. And again, these back seats fold down, very utilitarian. You can get a big sheet of plywood in the back, fold the seats down. But again, on the back, we see EFI, electronic fuel injection, which was the, a major buzzword in 1981 as carbon fiber is today or direct injection. But back then, carburetors were on their way out, electronic fuel injection with computers to actually feed gasoline at just the right time for maximum efficiency and power were on their way in. So it's a shock to see a first generation Supra here in the junkyard. Still a few things on it. This little panel right here, Super Shane Richardson's dying to get this thing. We'll maybe try and grab it, but that's still right there. It's kind of a, a rare thing to see in one piece. That is glass and these do shatter and you remove them. It's kind of hard to do properly. But the Supra, a loaded car, 15,000 bucks when this thing was new. Close to Corvette territory, but again, first generation Supra, a uh, humble start, but a very special car. Five extra inches for two extra cylinders, six cylinder power right here in the Supra. Well, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel and uh, give us a like, share it with your friends, and hit the bell so you know when the next video hits, which is tomorrow morning.